know what you guys learned about AD's thumb at halftime. Obviously, he was able to go back out and play. If you thought that uh, affected him, and how do you think that he'll be moving forward? Yeah, he had a sprained thumb. They were looking at it in the back, and um, you know when he's ready to come, ready to go, he came back out. Uh, I, I don't think it affected him in, in the second half, but you know I have to ask him. What were the things that you saw turn after you built the 19-point lead in the first half? Well, they're going to keep playing. It's a, the NBA game is, is a long game. Early leads don't really mean anything in the modern NBA. Um, you know, you got to keep playing. We learned that lesson last week. Um, but they made their run in the, in the second quarter, and you know it's, it's a 48-minute game. You got to play four quarters. Okay. Frank, what did you make of the look that Russ got at the end there? Yeah, uh, you know, not not good enough. We want to get a better shot than that. Um, you know, the spacing wasn't great. We were trying to get mellow to the top of the floor, uh, but the spacing wasn't great. Frank, there was a five-minute period in the fourth quarter when you guys couldn't score. Um, what did you see from your offense? During I'll have to look at the tape, but, you know, we missed a lot of layups and a lot of open threes. You know what I mean? We're getting good looks, and, you know, it's just one of those stretches where we couldn't get a bucket. And, um, you know, you got to rely on your defense, and, you know, it just wasn't enough. Shea, Shea, you know, give them credit. You know, Shea uh, had a terrific night throwing that bomb from near half court, you know, in the final minute. And, uh, you know, uh, give those guys credit. Frank, obviously without LeBron, you're going to be figuring things out, you know, kind of on the fly a little bit. But with that, that group you had at the end of the game, I don't know if that's a group you've said, but obviously not at the end of a game before. What were you looking for defensively from that group, and, and, and how, did, how did they do? Yeah, I just liked, uh, I liked Austin's energy defensively, and he was, he was making plays on both sides of the ball. Um, you know, so we went with him. A A B was uh, Avery was, you know, energy was good, and um, you know, obviously Russ Russ Mello and A D are going to be in there. Um, you know, we have enough. Uh, we just just didn't get enough stops, and you know, obviously uh, that stretch where we couldn't get a bucket was a uh, was a critical stretch. Frank, you guys gave up 35 points in the fourth quarter. Is this another sign you guys just trying to get the defense figured out, and you have so many different plate bodies out there? Yeah, um, you know, it's going to take time, but. You know, that's a game we should win. You know, we all feel that way right now. And, um, you know, disappointed in, obviously, that, that fourth quarter. And, uh, you know, we'll look at the tape tomorrow and get better from it. Hey, Frank, what do you think uh, Russ has done since the last OKC game when he had 10 turnovers to reduce those numbers? And also, where does he go from here with refining that even more? Where does he go what? Where does he go from here with refining that even more? Yeah, we just got to continue to, you know, learn what we're, we're asking him to do within our system. And, um, you know, one of those things is, is keeping his turnovers down, which he's done a better job of. And, um, you know, we got to continue to, to have him you know, touch, the paint and, touch the paint and create as much as possible. You guys have obviously been able, you've, you've said it's going to take time, it's going to take time and, and, and be patient. And that's just kind of the natural order of having so many new guys. But is it, how, how frustrating is it to kind of keep having the setbacks that, that prevent you from being able to kind of really start the process of building with, with, a, with a full group? I mean, you start to get, you get Wayne back and you lose LeBron now and, and who knows on some of the other guys. Yeah, we don't worry about stuff that we can't control. Um, we all want to win every game badly. You know, we want it to be, be perfect right now. Um, you know, we're, uh, we have big picture patience, but small picture sense of urgency, you know, to get this right right away. And, and to win these games in the short term. So, um, you know, we fall short tonight. Uh, it's disappointing. You know, we'll get, get, to, get back to work tomorrow, look at the film, and get better from it. Thanks, yeah. Quarter that's squandered. Uh, inexplicable, really. Uh, but the Young Thunder, who only have two wins, have now won in OKC and at Staples against the Lakers. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think we're all kind of still processing how it happened, in a sense. Uh, I don't think it was a lack of effort or, you know, that they didn't take this team seriously. Um, I just think for a group that's still trying to figure out what their identity is going to be. Are they going to be a, a fast-paced, high-scoring team and then be able to lock teams up in spurts? Or are they going to really be that number one, top two, top three defensive team in the league that they've been under Frank Vogel, make it really hard for teams to score and then, you know, when they're scoring well, be able to get separation. But it just never seemed like even with the lead, they were in control uh, of the game. Thunder missed a lot of open shots in the first half. And once they started to see the ball go in a little bit towards the end of that second quarter, Ty Jerome's in the house, and the momentum just really yeah. started to shift from there. Yeah, there was a 23-8 to run at the end of that second quarter that allows this team to believe 
that they can win this game, right? And and listen, the Lakers have an eight-point lead going into that fourth quarter, but but something that Fish said, they just haven't played well enough to separate and stay that way. Yeah, definitely another head scratcher for the Lakers. Uh, Geet, Fish, I really could not come up with any combination where this team would have been five and four uh, through nine. Uh, I know LeBron's missed three games now, but the Lakers should have enough. Uh, unfortunately for them, they did not. Uh, A.D. Russ, Carmelo, they scored. You know, no one else really jumped up to help on offense tonight. I, I think if the Lakers score 115, like they had been, they win this game pretty easily. Uh, but the Thunder, wow. I mean, you had that 34-foot logo three by Shea Gilgis Alexander. Uh, Dort, some big plays down the stretch, made a couple free throws, a big dunk. This OKC team doesn't realize it's supposed to be losing to the Lakers. And, and instead, they're 2-0 and against them. Kind of a, just got to shake your head at it, guys. Yeah, I get that there's injuries. I get that you're losing your, your, your best player in LeBron James, but uh, enough talent where you should win games like this. 35-24 uh, in that fourth quarter at home defish. Uh, that's where you have to step up defensively. And, and listen, I get it, CNBA. Guys are gonna, the shot by SGA, it's a crazy shot from the logo. But you're in that position, right? Yeah. You're in that position. Yeah, no, that's, that's the thing. I think it, it defensively, is offensively the team is still searching for yeah. how are we going to play. And, and with LeBron out, you know, now we're searching again. Early in the game, Russell really pushing the pace, scoring early. AD starting seven for seven from the field. And it seemed like those two guys were going to really carry the day. But as the game went on, the Lakers found it more difficult to score. And right now, at this point in the season, they cannot rely on their defense the way yeah. they have been in recent recent years. Especially with the personnel they have this year. This isn't the same personnel from the last no, it's year. Not. A lot of new faces. It's not. And, and then remember some of the guys you do have out. Correct. So that hurts the depth in that regard. That lack of trust on the defensive end early in the season with 11 new guys, that's the part that's going to come along the slowest. Frank Vogel's been saying it. You know, other teams know it. They can take advantage of the Lakers defensively during stretches of games, and they're going to have to figure it out. And you can't even say, to paraphrase James, they should take Greyhound buses home because they're already home. You know, which makes this loss even more difficult uh, to digest, I'm sure, for the team and its fans as well. If you look at the uh, the two losses here, yeah, just uh, the offense kind of uh, fell back today for sure. And uh, there it is, a big lead again. You know, it's it's just surprising to see these, these big leads. It's not a huge, massive run. I mean, it took uh, OKC a quarter and a half to kind of whittle away at it. All looked good when Westbrook hit a mid-range. About halfway through that second quarter, Lakers up 44 to 25 and just kind of chipping away, chipping away, chipping away. Lakers really had no answer for, for these young OKC Thunder guys that, again, should be probably like 13th, 14th, or 15th in the West when the season ends in, in four or five months. When we looked at the Laker calendar to start the season, you saw those first 10 games. I don't think any of us had them at five and four. But no. the reality is that's where we are at. Um, they are one and two without LeBron, a win coming against San Antonio in a battle, the two losses coming against OKC. Let's talk Anthony Davis. Great first half, especially that first quarter starting seven for seven. Uh, hits that thumb at the end of the half. Uh, comes out taped up in the third quarter. Plays the rest of the time. Obviously not as assertive. Finishes with 29-17. Uh, five assists and two blocks. Fish, but definitely wasn't the same offensive threat at the rim. Yeah, it didn't seem to be as aggressive and comfortable attacking the basket playing as close to the basket when he entered the game in the third quarter. I thought in the fourth quarter when the game was on the line. There he was, you know, yes. Yeah, his physicality stepped up. I, I think he really tried to have a presence. But in the third quarter, he really just didn't seem to, you know, want to attack, maybe have that thumb get hit again. Um, and then we saw late in the game when the Lakers took the lead late, he accidentally hit it off the backboard. And he kind of shook his head because he knew the ball came off his hand the wrong way. Yeah. He's not really a backboard shooter from 45 degrees. Uh, so, so it, you know, I don't think it caused him to necessarily not be as efficient. But he probably was thinking twice about, you know, how he wanted to, to be uh, assertive and aggressive out there, knowing that maybe that right thumb was bothering him. And this was supposed to be the easy part of the schedule these first nine games, you know, against a, a bunch of projected non-playoff teams. Now the tough games start. They got to go to Portland in a couple days. 
Fish, as you can attest, never an easy place historically for the Lakers to play. They've gotten over it a little bit in the last few years, but still not an easy W at all. Then you start playing teams like Miami, who, who are at or near the top of the East. Uh, you got Minnesota and Charlotte as well, uh, teams that are playing above expectations.